Hi all, uh, today I am going to start with the module 3, Digital Modulation Techniques. As you know, uh, you, we have already gone through PCS that is Principles of Communication Systems. There we have studied about Analog Modulation Techniques, Analog Communication Techniques, correct? Similarly, in this particular module, we are going to have different modulation techniques used in digital communication and uh, when we want to transmit a digital data over a band pass channel it is necessary to modulate incoming data onto a carrier wave what is your incoming data it is a bit sequence zeros and one sequence carrier wave will be your sinusoidal wave which might be sine or cosine minus sine minus cosine depends on the requirement okay and the different modulation techniques what we have are Amplitude Shift King ASK, Frequency Shift King FSK, Phase Shift King PSK. Here Shift King means change of any bit is uh, depicted as switching. Okay, And that switching we have given name as Shift King. Phase is shifted to indicate change over of 0 to 1 or 1 to 0. Frequency is changed with respect to the bit sequence 1, one frequency 0, another frequency amplitude is changed then it is amplitude shift keying. Keying is nothing but switching of the carrier with respect to the message. Okay. Uh, I already explained this one. You can just go through. And now the waveforms. In the previous class only we have gone through these waveforms right. Amplitude shift keying means 0 is represented by 0 amplitude and one is represented by a finite frequency high carrier frequency you can see in this interval there there will be around two peaks and this interval another two uh, two and a half peaks correct almost you can say three peaks and here it is zero and again when there is a one there is a frequency that's why it is called as amplitude shift king amplitude is present here and absent over here Next is frequency shift king. Zero is represented by a low frequency and ones are represented by a high frequency. Again zero is low frequency, one is high frequency. It is called as FSK or frequency shift king. And it is not like always zero is with a low frequency. Zero you can represent with high frequency also. Ones you can represent with low frequency. Next modulation techniques technique is PSK or phase shift king where phase of the carrier is shifted so as to indicate whether the signal is 0 or 1 you can see over here 0 is starting from 0 to minus uh, that is going in the negative direction and when it comes 1 the next bit is 1 so 180 degree phase shift is taken place now Again you can see two one bits are there but no phase shift from 1 to 1 but when it goes from 1 to 0 there is a phase shift of 180 degree. Again 0 to 1 there is a change of bit that's why phase shift of 180 degree. Likewise it goes. I hope you have understood the basics of these shift keying techniques. Now all these techniques we categorized and study based on their detection technique. Detection means at the receiver how they can be detected. We know that there are two types of detections. One is coherent detection and another one is non-coherent detection. In coherent detection the receiver should also have the carrier wave phase reference that is provided at transmitter. That means receiver should have a carrier signal with the same frequency which was transmitted at or used at the transmit rate that is the very important aspect of coherent detection when it comes to non-coherent detection it is not a big deal but the complexity is uh, complexity is reduced in one way and it has been increased in other way that is uh, without the carrier signal you have to detect the signal means 
it is a difficult thing okay when you have perfect carrier at the receiver it is a somewhat uh, we can say easier thing okay which is not mentioned over here only one advantage she has mentioned disadvantage is error is in uh, introduced in non coherent detection in coherent error will be less that is the other point okay now in coherent detection there are two particular things one is cross correlate cross correlator another one is decision making device cross correlator correlates the incoming signal with uh, a carrier signal and thereby detects try to detect the signal and decision device makes a decision based, based on the detected signal okay whether it is a sim, uh, bit 1 or bit 0 that is the work of decision making and how these different modulation schemes are uh, modulation scheme are chosen that is maximum data rate minimum probability of symbol error minimum transmission power minimum channel bandwidth maximum resistance to interfering signals minimum circuit complexity taking these parameters into consideration different modulation techniques are adopted okay where probability of symbol error and transmission power channel bandwidth are very important aspects and also another one is interference is also a one of the major aspect based on that we choose different modulation techniques so let us start with coherent binary modulation techniques coherent binary modulation technique means as i have told you need to have uh, same carrier frequency at the receiver end that is locally you have to generate a similar kind of carrier signal which you have used at the transmitter okay and you have to multiply that with incoming signal at the receiver that is the need in coherent detection and i have already explained about constellation diagram it is being given over here what is constellation diagram you can refer that now let us start with our first modulation technique that is phase shift keying okay phase shift keying using coherent detection first one in the uh, that is binary phase shift keying binary means it is two digit either zero or one so zero and one these bits are represented by shifting the phase of carrier that is what it means okay in uh, in binary psk the pair of signals s1 of t and s2 of t used to represent binary symbols 1 and 0 respectively that means s1 of t and s2 of t uh, uh, are modulated signals they are modulated signals what is this s1 of t it is square root of 2 eb by tb cos 2 phi fct and s2 of t is uh, the amplitude is same and the signal carrier signal is cos 2 pi fct plus pi that is if you add pi angle to cos it will become minus cos so you can write s2 of t is minus of this signal correct it is same as this one now what is this tb tb is symbol interval if you have a one then that symbol interval is tb and eb is transmitted signal energy per bit per bit how much energy you are going to transmit that is given by eb and fc is carrier frequency and this carrier frequency is chosen such that it is n times the frequency of the symbol or nc by tb the interval bit interval should be divided by some integer number okay based on that what you can say when you look at this here number of cycles are there right in one bit for indicating one bit 
you are transmitting number of cycles of this sine wave that is what has been said over here okay and this s1 of t and s2 of t are out of phase by 180 degree as i have said it will be plus cos and minus cos 180 degree out of phase and they are referred to as antipodal Okay, the only basis function phi1 of t of unit energy is phi1 of t is equal to square root of 2 by tb cos 2 pi fct. This is, you can say this is c of t in your analog communication. Okay, and it is called as basis function, not basic, it is basis. Okay, basis function because uh, this same signal if I generate cos 2 pi fct. Okay, using some oscillator I will generate means I can modify easily with some mathematical operation. If I multiply it by minus 1, I will get minus cosine. If I shift the phase by plus pi by 2, then I will get sine wave. Correct? If I shift the phase by plus pi, then I will get again minus cosine. Likewise, if I gen able to have linear combination of this function and can generate different functions out of it then that function is called as basis function and here in bpsk what we are using only one signal right you can see here same cost signal here also it is same but only the amplitude level is changed correct that's why only one basis function is required for bpsk now expressing the modulated signal s1 of t and s2 of t in terms of phi1 of t is square root of eb into phi1 of t minus square root of eb into phi1 of t now probably you have understood what is the importance of this one i can generate s2 of t and s1 of t if i know phi1 of t and uh, there is a derivation for having this phi1 of t okay which uh, which has been skipped over here not required as of now because it is a lengthy derivation and uh, not preferably not uh, going to be asked okay now this s1 of t we have expressed in terms of phi1 of t and s2 of t i have expressed in terms of phi1 of t interval is as you know z uh, 0 to tb both now coherent bpsk is characterized by one dimension with two message points why one di dimension eb and minus eb both comes under plus x axis and minus x axis correct and here you can see there are two symbols or two message points one is called as s11 another it should have been s21 okay you make a correction s1 not 1 2 it is s21 2 means second message point in first dimension first message point in first dimension what is the energy energy of that is square root of eb and this is minus square root of eb for all these values minus square root of eb plus square root of eb and this uh, square root of 2 eb by tb uh, derivations are there which is not specified over here okay and how this square root of eb message point is represented actually in analog form that is this is plus cosine wave with amplitude of this much positive negative here starting with negative going up to positive square root of 2 eb by tb this is minus cosine wave this is plus cosine wave this is for symbol 1 this is for symbol 0 okay and here it is not been mentioned you can say this as 0 okay it is called as decision threshold that means at the receiver if your symbol or the amplitude of the signal is greater than this then that is considered to be bit 1 if the 
signal estimated is lesser than this boundary that is less than zero any value it will be considered as minus square root of eb or in a way you can say it is symbol zero okay that is what has been depicted over here and this is called as signal space diagram or constellation diagram remember that the same thing has been explained over here okay and what is the region of first symbol region of first symbol is from 0 to infinite that is region z1 and region z2 for symbol 0 this is for symbol 1 this is for symbol 0 remember symbol means it can contain one or more number of bits okay interchangeably we can use but we need to remember that bit means only single bit symbol means more than one bit also possible and the distance between uh, two message points is 2 into square root of eb this you can understand from the above diagram now uh, another aspect as i have told error error occurs when signal s2 is transmitted but due to noise received signal falls in the region z1 and when and when s1 is transmitted but if the received signal falls in region z2 okay you have transmitted a signal uh, say a bit 1 but at the receiver the noise is such that the signal will appear as 0 okay and then we can call it as error vice versa it is applicable you have transmitted 0 and because of noise the bit appears to be 1 then also we say that there is a error in received signal okay that, that is what the basic of BPSK now we'll look for the functional schematic of PSK generation and detection BPSK oh, essential it is BPSK transmitter and BPSK receiver at the input what we have is binary data sequence that is zeros and ones what type of coding we are using polar nrz level encoder which you have studied in the previous mod module and it is given here and what is the energy of this the energy of this signal is square root of eb remember that the energy of the signal is square root of eb for positive pulses minus square root of eb for negative pulses that is polar right plus square root of eb minus square root of eb and in product modulator it is simply multiplied by basis function you know how this basis function has arrived correct when we multiply this what you are going to get bpsk signal s of t okay that is what we had given as s1 of t for one phase s2 of t for another phase 0 is represented by minus uh, sorry 180 degree phase shift 1 is represented by 0 degree phase shift now this signal s of t is transmitted over wireless media or wired media it depends at the receiver the received signal is called as x of t it is first applied to a correlator correlator has two blocks one is product modulator this is also a product modulator and followed by an integrator okay this product modulator when we multiply phi 1 of t and we pass the combination of this signal through integrator this integrator you can think it is just an low pass filter you can search and you will get that the integrator is nothing but a low pass filter remember that this integrator what it does your carrier is high frequency this signal is high frequency with bits or the message signals involved in that when two high frequency carrier are multiplied at some points they will be added some other points the carrier will be subtracted when you pass through this combination when you pass through the integrator what happens is the integrator will 
remove the high frequency component and only pass low frequency component and it is given to decision device this signal is before giving to decision device the uh, signal or the input to decision device we can call as x1 the decision device is nothing but a comparator which is set to a threshold of 0 if x1 of x1 is greater than 0 then decision is when x1 is greater than 0 the symbol received will be considered as 1 if x1 is less than 0 the decision is made in favor of 0 that is what the work of bpsk receiver okay the same thing has been explained over here instead of the received signal uh, x1 he has uh, he is talking about plus eb and minus square root of eb plus square root of eb and minus square root of eb indicating symbol 1 and symbol 0 okay the same thing has been explained over here okay just now i have explained through the block now let us look at probability of error calculation or bit error rate calculation for bpsk signal let x of t be received signal in the block diagram you have seen that x of t is the received signal what is this x of t x of t is the transmitted signal with some additive white gaussian noise indicated by w of t for an interval 0 to tb for one symbol i am considering okay for one symbol it is 0 to tb let us assume that you have transmitted 0 or symbol message symbol s2 then the correlator output is x1 of t you can see over here this is received signal applied to correlator carrier signal is phi1 of t or basis function and integrated this is your x1 of t the output of correlator okay that is integration of x of t multiplied with phi1 of t and we know that x of t is what x of t is s2 of t we are assuming that symbol 0 is transmitted added with noise so if we substitute in the above equation what we will get this one correct i can split this s2 of t phi1 of t w of t and phi1 of t if i integrate this signal okay if i integrate the signal i will get a random value which is omega 1 okay random value characterized by uh, gaussian function okay and this value what we are going to get is we are going to get minus square root of eb because we have transmitted what we have transmitted a zero symbol with an energy of minus square root of eb that is what we are going to get by cancelling out the carrier after the integration we are not going to uh, going into the details of this integration and the subsequent values okay now this value i have represented by s21 as indicated in the signal space diagram okay and what about this signal w of n wn oh sorry w1 which is sample value of random variable capital w with mean is equal to zero as we are considering this as a random gaussian value we can consider its mean as zero and variance sigma square is equal to n naught by two this is very important okay based on this only we are going to arrive at the bit error rate and what is x1 x1 is sample value of Gaussian random variable x1 it is the output output is also random right depending on this random value the output also we are going to get a random value only so the expectation of our symbol 0 okay ex expectation of x1 x1 is nothing but we are expecting symbol 0 is given by expectation of minus square root of eb plus omega 1 
and what is the expectation of this noise this will be same expectation of zero will be expectation of zero uh, represented by energy minus square root of eb expectation of noise will be with respect to its mean and variance what is its mean its mean is minus square root of eb and variance is always n naught by 2 using these values using the variance value the mean value and expectation value we can put these values into conditional probability density function of a random variable the output of correlator is random variable now because of the noise and for symbol 0 the expectation of x1 sorry the conditional probability density function for symbol 0 is given by this equation if I substitute for x1 mu and sigma square I am going to get this equation okay after that probability of error of 0 is p of 0 denotes the decision in favor of symbol 1 yes we have transmitted 0 but probability of getting symbol 1 is given by p if x1 is greater than 0 if x1 is greater than 0 then it is we consider as error because we want x1 to be lesser than 0 so as to indicate it is a 0 symbol correct negative value now this probability of error for 0 is can be calculated by using probability density function conditional probability density function integrated over interval 0 to infinity already calculated value is substituted here and we have another substitution for x1 plus square root of eb by square root of n0 is equal to z if i differentiate this i am going to get dx1 is equal to square root of n0 into dz okay and the limits can be changed which is given over here how the limits are changed now this signal will be the p of 0 after all the substitutions i can get the lower limit as square root of eb by n0 e to the power minus z square square root of n0 dz and the modified form i can write as this one and we we have a complementary error function erfc function which we might have studied in the second module itself okay in that what we can represent is if a probability function is given by this equation then it can be easily represented as 1 by 2 erfc of lower limit of this integration lower limit of integration is this one half erfc of eb by n naught similarly we can calculate this for symbol 1 you have transmitted symbol 1 and what is the error of getting symbol 0 at the output probability of getting symbol 0 at the output which is also you are going to get same as previous one and total error is pe which is half of p of 0 and p of 1 considering the probability of occurrence of zeros and ones are equal which is 1 by 2 using that we can write pe that is probability of error in overall system is p of 0 plus p of 1 divided by 2 and again 1 by 2 and 1 by 2 if you add it will be 1 multiplied by 1 by 2 you are going to get the same 1 by 2 erfc of eb by n naught this is the probability of error for the given channel as signal energy square root of eb okay and as the signal energy increases average probability of error pe decreases so if i want to increase the uh, if you if you want to decrease the error then you have to increase the 
energy of the signal because this n0 is always constant which is decided by the uh, this one the channel channel noise that's why we need to have if we have more energy then the separation between 0 and 1 in the signal space diagram will be more and decision can be made accurately and for this lecture it's enough and i hope you are understood if you have any queries regarding this lecture you can comment in the comment section or you can directly contact me thank you have a good day